The poet and laureate of the state prize, Nesib Bek Aytoli, began his career at a regional newspaper. He worked in the Baldur Gun and Jodiz magazines, in the Kazakh literature newspaper, as well in the Jalin Publishing House and the Writers Union of Kazakhstan. The artist of the word, named the favorite of independence poetry, answers the questions of the Culture Talks program. What can you be proud of when talking about Kazakh poetry in the period of independence? The history of independence, its fate, does not go back to the early 90s, but of course much earlier. Poets of the distant past spoke about this. For example, Kastugan Girao, singer, wrote in his Tolgao or Reflection, having left their native land on Edil, my people are worried and bothered. In addition, Dulat Babatayuli, Abai Kunanbaev, Shortanbai Kanayuli, and others express their grief about the fate of their native land. They are poets of sorrowful times who dreamed of wonderful times of independence. Our ancestors always longed for the same freedom as in the times of the Turkic Khaganate. During the period of Soviet rule, such personalities as Magjan Jumabayev paid with their lives for this striving for independence, for dreaming of independence, for glorifying it. During the bloody Soviet regime, our poets wrote about freedom between the lines. This is evidenced, for example, by the hopeful verses from the book by Kadir Mirza Ali. His poem Asaw reflects the fate of the Kazakhs, their thirst for freedom and will. For example, the poem of Kasim Amanjolov, The Word About Myself, speaks not so much about his struggle for life, but about difficult times of confrontation. Coming people, Kasim sees you. You are approaching, like a golden palace. I will lie underground this time, wrapped up forever with an earthly blanket. This is what Kasim said, dreaming only of independence. All this comes from the depth of history. This is what our ancestors grieved about and what they dreamed about. This was the goal of Alash Orda, which Mirza Kibdulatov, Akhmet Baitursinov and others sang in their poems. Once we finally found this bird of happiness, its chanting should not stop. If we had not composed poems about independence from the first days, then we would have been worthless. Our poets did it from the very first days, and I did it. I am by no means boasting, but I wrote approximately 30 poems, and there was not a single day that I did not speak about independence. We keep composing poetry to this day. Therefore, during independence, not only poetry was born, but also great novels were written about our country about history. For example, Kabdesh Jumadilov created a novel about Kabanbay Batir. The works of Abish Kekelbaev were published. Other monumental works were written, large-scale poems were presented to the world. So the study of all the literature that appeared after gaining independence is a matter of the future and is a huge work. Among your works glorifying the Kazakh history of the last 300 years, there is a poem by Tirak, which has been criticized a lot. How do you feel about this? This did not bother me in any way, and I think that these are unreasonable attacks due to envy. In Soviet times, for example, poets wrote about Stalin. Jean Buljabayev wrote, and Mukagali Makatayev has such works as Mavr Ilyich. Everybody wrote. There were no poets who did not write on this topic. We have Serbai Maulenov, Gafu Kairbekov, Fariza Ongarsinova. And what? Would we now also deny their works? They, after all, wrote about their time. We cannot deny their creativity. For example, Mavr by Mukagali Makatayev is a wonderful poem. Somewhere they believed in what they wrote, somewhere they were forced to do it. Now, if I write poems about the transfer of the capital of independent Kazakhstan to the vastness of Sariyarka, if I chant Akorda, our flag, then what? It turns out that I'm becoming a pro-governmental poet, right? In Soviet times, everyone wrote such poems. During that regime, the Kazakh people witnessed a lot of things. 
We were exterminated, we were robbed, we were drowned in blood. And if now I write poems about our independence, what if they contain a few lines about Yabasi? In general, the poem by Tirak is a work that tells about an entire era, and not only about the formation of Astana and its development. Let the journalists not be offended, but mainly they ask tricky questions and then others pick up. I wrote a poem about flag, about Kenesari, about Bogenbai. Isn't this the history of independence? By Tirak is its continuation. At the time of Abnai Khan, there were great batirs. For example, Berdi Koja, Bogenbai, Kabanbai, now is by. I wrote about them starting with Jalantos Batir. The main message of these poems is independence, the struggle of our ancestors for freedom. The more time passes, the more I become convinced of the truth that the dog barks and the caravan moves on. Sooner or later, all these conversations will remain in the past, because future generations will comprehend the truth. The poem by Tarek was included in the school curriculum for the ninth grade. Yesterday, I received a call from Aktobe and before that from many other regions of our country. They wanted to talk to me about this poem on the phone, and these were school children. I didn't have time to talk to everyone, but I answered several of them. If this work was not important, would you read it so much? It does not concern only Nazarbayev. Those who do not perceive the power dislike this poem. But presidents change, and our homeland, our independence is eternal. We want to be an eternal country. We are leading our caravan to this, the God willing, so it will be. Why not become an eternal state? If we increase the demography, we will protect freedom, preserve our unity. If we get rid of corruption and other vices of our society, if those are in leadership positions, we'll first of all think about the people. If we bring up new generations, why not to be an eternal state? The shoots of the eternity of our state are in ourselves and I perceive the construction of our capital as the beginning of the eternal state. A guest of one of our previous episodes, poet Serigbay Ospanov said that he found his poetic style closer to 60 years old. When did you find your poetic style? I found it early. At the age of 20, 25, I wrote the poem Skulls and it won the Republican competition, which at that time was annually held by the publishing house Jalin. It was a very large-scale competition and I won it for four years in a row. The first time, I won it with the poem Skulls. Through the conversations of these skulls, I showed the people's aspirations for independence. This was the beginning of my poetry on the topic of independence and its history. I chose this topic at the very beginning of my career. After that, there was a poem, Native Americans Do Not Give Up, which I wrote it after I read the news that the leader of the American Indian tribe means is in an American prison. And in this poem, I kind of talked about the Native Americans but at the same time wrote about the fate of our people. When the sun rises, everything will turn green. We are the shoots of a forest scorched by flames. That's how I wrote there. It was we who became these young shoots, those generations whose ancestors were deprived of freedom and what they just didn't endure. We are young shoots of this forest, which take their origin from its roots. I wrote about this back then. What does the poet's heart sing about in the first place? I want to sing about my country and my land, about its fate, about the fate of generations. In all my works, both in dreams and in reality, I write about the fate of the nation. The deep meaning of the poem by Tirak is unity. Without unity, nothing will happen. Now the poem The Land is Dearer Than the Soul about Juma Bek Tashenov is being published on social networks. I say there that we left Tashenov alone at the moment when he was fighting Khrushchev. But in the end, he was still able to keep six of our regions from being transferred to Russia. Once we abandoned Kinesari too, after all, we sold him. 
All this happened from the lack of unity at that time. We need unity like air. If we are united as one fist, then no enemy would defeat us. We are losing a lot because there is no unity. Let it be the theme of language or land. If we talk about the language, then the Kazakhs themselves do not speak their native language. Who forbids them to speak their native language at home with their mother, father, child or grandson? Nobody forbids. Thirty years have passed since the acquisition of independence. Its peers are now 25-30 years old. Still, there are a lot of those who do not know their native language. Unity is not only about friendship. It is about the unity of ideas, the unity of principles and a common goal. We are losing because of the absence of all this. Whatever problem we face, we should be under the same flag and should not be divided into tribes or locality we live. Since you have mentioned this topic, I would like to ask if there were moments in your life when you suffered from the division into tribes. There is no Kazakh who doesn't divide people into tribes. There is also no Kazakh who hates his tribe. Know your ancestors up to the seventh generation, but put your family above the nation. We must think at the national level and move away from the division into tribes. Many of our people and even those who hold leading positions still cannot move away from this, starting from the district ones and ending with officials of the republican level. They pull relatives and matchmakers to work. We must think at the national level, like Akhmet Baitursinov, Ali Khan Bokeykanov, Baurijan Mamishuli, and Jumabek Tashenov. This is the national idea. This is where we are losing. You need to know your origin, but you can't put it at the forefront. We had many elders, and I wrote this song Agala Rai for them, which is performed by Ramazan Stamgazia. You would have found it in the depth of the heart, without dividing the brothers. How we will become one people if we are sitting under an oak tree and you cut it at the root? With these lines, I expressed my position. The song is already 30 years old. When they stand on the podium, they are patriots. And when they come down from it and go home, they begin to divide into tribes at home, in public, and in the struggle you must be patriots. Such hypocrisy is destroying us. We, many of us, are two-faced. One of the young poets, whom I won't name, told me that now there are more writers than readers and much that they write remains unclaimed. Do you agree with the opinion of your successors? I don't know who said this, but I disagree with this person. There weren't many writers, real writers. But there are many who say that they are writers, who consider themselves to be such. Now there are many sons of directors, district chiefs, who wrote about their mother or father, but they did not write themselves, but someone wrote for them, for money. These are the writers. There are even those who have become members of the Writers' Union. Now people consider them to be writers, but they are not writers. I disagree with this young man. It's not hard to publish a book now if you have money. There used to be a state committee that approved everything. What was not approved, no printing house had the right to print. Now you go to any printing house, pay money and get published. But these are not books, but family essays. This is not literature. We have to learn about real literature. On the other hand, the intellectual level of readers has decreased, their tastes have become narrow-minded. They read such books and then they think that all writers write such nonsense. What is Kazakh poetry losing today?
It switches to the language of journalism, to colloquial speech. Search for new phrases, new ideas, new portraits. That's what is missing. They copy what was already written, plagiarize, but do not work themselves. This happens even among eminent poets. Such writing is beginning to spread. For example, they will hear someone's thoughts, retell them in their own words and present them as their own. There are two types of poets. One is looking for new ideas, phrases, metaphors. The others take advantage of the former people's labor, paraphrase other people's poems and present them as their own, like sellers in a mall. It is an eternal process that cannot be stopped. But real, true poets always find their readers and are truly respected. No matter how much they are robbed and copied, they are unique. Time will tell all this. We are being replaced by good youth. They certainly have drawbacks, for example, in terms of the linguistic wealth that they have lost. They no longer have that bright and beautiful language of the times of Abai Kunanbaev, Kasim Amanjolov, Mukagali Makatayev. They write frivolous poems about parting, about longing. They float shallowly. I'm afraid of this. Poetry about the country, about the homeland, about the people, about the nation, that's not enough. If you look at the world's best poets, they all wrote about their people. We read someone else's poetry, of course, you need to read it, but you shouldn't try to mix it with our poetry. We must grow from our roots. Of course, we must look for good forms, comparisons, but we must not depart from our origin, from our beginning. Such a tree will never bear fruit. If you plant an apple tree in infertile soil, it won't grow. Therefore, each literature must have its own native land, a basis. Our basis is Kazakh spirituality, Kazakh land. Our poetry dates back to the times of the ancient Jirao. We must develop this. What do you think about sycophant poets? Don't you think that flattery is an insult to poetry? You're right. We have dedication poems. Are now. I'm one of those who writes a lot of Arnau. Tumanbai Moldagaliev was Arnau master. He found poetry in the object of his dedication poem. When he went to some kind of celebration, then making a toast, he could not speak in simple words. He always composed poetry. After that, everyone accused him of excessive praise. But why not write about national heroes and figures? I wrote about Jumabek Tashenov, about Baitirak. If you write all this with your soul, this is completely different. But it is wrong to write poetry for the purpose of adulation, comparing someone to a saint or almost God. Do you write a lot of Arnau poetry for celebrations? No. If someone, for example, is 70 years old, a friend or an older brother, then I can write poetry about his merits. In the future, I plan to publish a book of my Arnau poems. This is history. The poems that I dedicated to Tumanbai Moldagaliev, Mukagali Makatayev, for example. I think these are good poetry. There is a verse that I dedicated to Sain Muradbekov, Abish Kakilbaev. This is chanting of the time. This is not adulation. After all, in the language of poetry, I paint a portrait of a person, what he did for the people. This is different. All poets who write are now cannot be called sycophants. This is art. Are now poetry can only be written by the best poet. It's not easy. It's very difficult. People are not alike. This is a great art. It is difficult to write for children, especially for preschool children. Therefore, it is very difficult to write dedication poetry. Since we are talking about children, 2021 has been declared the year of children's literature. What are the problems in this area? 
Kadir balarga cezatın cazuşu, balarga cezat nakit kişi cekan smak siyakta hani verbek dişim bir tıkan ağaların balgan. There are many disadvantages. There are no writers who write for children. Real writers such as Jakan Smakov, Anwarbek Duysenbiev, Mubarak Jamanbalinov, who wrote only for children, are now gone. We have announced a year of children's literature, but what can we give to children? What can they get? I am one of those who wrote for children. Muzaffar Alimbayev, for example, devoted 30 years of his life to children's literature while heading the Baldur Gun magazine. There is literature for teenagers, for young children, for elementary grades, but it is very difficult to find it as well as children's poems and writers. What should be done? We need a comprehensive plan that will solve problems in this area. Now in the era of the Internet and technology, children are completely different. We need the literature of the new era, which should educate the national spirit, form the foundations for the study of the native language. We need new talents. The literature that existed before 20-30 years ago is no longer relevant. There are also translations of world classics. They also need to be republished from the same point of view. Many people say that they are children's writers or poets. I will not name them, but they are not children's writers. These are people who make money from it. We shouldn't make money on children's literature. We should cherish it like the apple of our eye. After all, we know those who call themselves children's writers. I say this because I have worked in this area for 15-20 years, and I know what I'm talking about. Bitcoin ona ait olduğu zaman ben balları devletin kazanında 15-20 yıl oturup cumhurbaşkanı adamın son tutun bilgisini ait oturum. Now society accuses our intelligentsia of being silent at the moment when topical issues of the country are raised. When should a poet not be silent? We must not be silent when it comes to national issues. I always talk about it. The opposition and journalists sometimes criticize the intelligentsia for no reason. Representatives of the intelligentsia write about this. They do not have to go out on the streets. They say what they want to say. People should read. Our intelligentsia is very educated and wise. I cannot criticize my colleagues and elders. They all speak and write. But people don't hear them. Their voice does not reach the people. Society thinks if you go out into the street, everything will be decided. But I do not support this. The duty of a writer is to write, not to go out and fight. When talking with a poet, I simply cannot but ask to read poetry. I just brought my book with me, and I knew that I would be asked about it. I wrote the poem I saw a colt in my dreams a long time ago. I saw a colt in my dreams today. I saw it playing and running free. My fellow creature, where did you come from? For a long time, you have been at the bottom of my heart. A pretty spotted colt with a flowing mane. See it appearing from out of nowhere. I thought back to days full of delight, when I myself played like a colt. Not letting the dust settle on him, the little animal goes tearing along. It doesn't even notice that flimsy strap about its neck. Meanwhile, I am far away in the city, seeking fame as a poet. You don't know as yet, dear colt, that straps will rub your chest, your soft back subdued to the saddle. For a long time, you have been at the bottom of my heart. Today you trouble my soul. I still think of your innocent eyes, that I could gaze into a thousand times. I saw the flowers, I saw the sky and the sun brightly shining. It was a mystery to me to think that a rider might whip you cruelly. Green fields and grass are far from me now. I think back to the days of childhood. When I was free of all sins, dear cold, come across and say hello. Please visit me once in a while. I wrote this poem when I was young, about your age. I hope you enjoyed it.
It is marvelous. Thank you for your time. Good luck in your endeavors. May your work for the people flourish. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best. Work for your people.